Pilots, Drain Man here, and today I got a pretty cool video. We're going to check out the all-new JetRC stack. This is the Taker stack. It is an 8-bit, 60-amp, Bluetooth F745 stack that you are not going to want to miss out on. Let's go. All right, pilots, so here's the deal. Jeff RC, holy cow, everything from little micros to full side drones to bad old frames to stacks and ESCs and flight controllers and you name it, they make it. They've been around for a while and they are not new to FPV. And when they make stacks, they make stacks pretty dang good. And that's what goes in all of their ready to flies. And anybody who's ever had one, actually, I've got this puppy here. This is the Jeff RC Mark V. And it's not new, no. But I'm just looking for a good solid frame that I can fly and bash and crash and not have a ton of problems. And I've heard some good things about this thing. And check this thing out. It's got the aluminum cage and the carbon fiber looks good. I mean, this is a good looking frame. The price is right and it's made by Jep RC. And you can buy this as a frame and build it yourself, which is what I'll do. Or you can buy this ready to fly. And if you buy it ready to fly, it's going to come with the components like this. Jep RC Stacks. And I wanted to go ahead and go over this because it's a new product. Hint, hint, hint. It's not even released yet, so I won't even be able to put a link for you to buy this, but you get to see it first right here on this channel. <laughs> but what makes this super awesome is everything from dual gyros to Bluetooth to you're just, it's just packed with features on a quality stack that is not priced through the roof. So I'm super excited to check this out. So let's go ahead and crack this puppy open. Now, when we peel open the top of the box, you get all kinds of little cards which honestly we don't see all the time sometimes we open up these stacks and there's nothing in there to go with it this is a cool little card this thing right here it's got the Chinese on the back of course if that is your native tongue and if you're not right here it lets you know everything about the stack that you may need to know then you get this and oh <laughs> okay, we are packed with instructions. We've got everything from wiring to setting up on beta flight, you name it, it's in there and that's pretty sweet. And then in the box, wow, what a beautiful display. So we've got our ESC, holy cow, that looks good. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not a fan of putting in the grommets, the little gummies, you know, the vibration dampening grommets. They're already installed for us. And here you go, there is your new Taker stack. Uh, and I can't wait to check it out. So I'm gonna set it aside right here. Oh, plugs and connectors for each and every accessory. Oh, what's that, a DJI plug? Oh my God, if you're a DJI guy, you've got your DJI plug right there. Oh, what's that? Another plug. What's that? Our jumper from our flight controller to our ESC. What is this? You get a special connector here. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not even sure what that is. It's got a protection tube over it. And you've got your two connectors on each end. There's two to three things I'm seeing here. One, it may be HD zero or walk snail. I don't know, but additionally, you know what it may just be? Here is your DJI plug, and your DJI plug is going to have everything from power, ground, your RX, your TX, and your receiver in case you're running a DJI radio. That means you're getting S bus and ground. But if you don't run that, then you've got to depin this, and then you've got to plug it in, and then you're minusing that feature from that plug, which is okay, but Maybe what they've done is depend it for us, and that's what this extra plug is. But I'm going to be honest, I don't know. So that's pretty cool, and that's pretty exciting. In the bag, you've got a beautiful bag of components here, extra grommets. You've got your stack screws. You've got the nylon nuts in clear. I love those. And lastly, in the bag, you've got a UPL capacitor. It's not too big, not too fat, so it should do well and fit just fine. And bam, look at that. You've got your all black, not yellow, XT60 lead. And you've got plenty of length on these cables so you can trim them to the size that you want. 
This wire could also be for an analog VTX. All right, let's dive into our stack just a little bit. If we wanna get up close and personal and we really wanna check it out, we all know that there's only one way to do that, and that is with the Scopey Scope. So we're gonna go ahead and dive into the scope and take a closer look. All right, Pod, so let's dive into the scope. Let's take a closer look. And this is really cool because this is where we get to dive into the circuitry. We get to see, you know, the physics and the artwork behind what they did and why they did it. Why are they placing components away from these components? And this can point, you know, this introduces noise to this. And, you know, on an aircraft, that's a big deal. We can't have unneeded noise. It's a big deal. It can affect everything. So it's really cool to dive in and take a look. So let's go ahead and jump into the scope and take a closer look. So right here, what you're seeing is our STM32 F745. That is a beautiful MCU and that is what's on board. Now for our IMU, that is your gyro. We actually have dual gyro. We have an MPU 6000 and we also have an ICM42688. And that's these two puppies right here dual gyro. So here you go. You're getting a middle of the line board. Price is middle of the line, 60 amp BSC. You're not getting shorted in any way. And then they went ahead and just went let me go ahead and hook you up with dual gyro. Not that you need it, but hey, if one fails, now you got another. Multiple reasons why you may have a dual gyro. So very, very cool. All right, you've got Bluetooth supported. You've got a barometer on board. You've got dual BEC on board. You've got a five volt and a 12 volt. We're gonna go ahead and dive into that a little bit more. We've got a 512 megabyte black box chip on board. I love the gold components. That's absolutely gorgeous. And I don't know if my scope is displaying the colors because I have an, have an LED blasting on it, but this is gold. These are gold. They gold trimmed everything. Everything from this Jep RC all the way down to the pads. Everything is that goldish color, which looks really cool. And look at this boot button. We haven't seen a boot button like this in a while. A lot of times we're seeing those little cheapies. This is a good boot button right here. I can just reach down with pliers and click it. You're not able to really do that. You gotta stab at your board generally and you're scratching and you're hitting other components trying to press down on that. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so right underneath our boot button we have our barometer. I wanna scroll down and go over our components. This is really cool. This is a chip that you may or may not be familiar with. It is the ESP32. That is a Bluetooth chip. It's also used for many, many other things inside of communications on phones and all sorts of other stuff. That is what that chip is. And then combined in conjunction is this right here. And you say, you may say like, what is that? It kind of looks like a fuse. It's not. It's actually an antenna. And that is the antenna that is putting out the Bluetooth because you can use your phone and Bluetooth to this flight controller and set up all of your beta flight parameters, all of them. And then right here, you're seeing where it is a Taker F7BT, that means Bluetooth. We've got an oscillator here, we've got our MCU, we've got our IMUs, we've already gone over those. And then you've got uh, two LEDs, these are your status, status, MCU. They're letting you know what you got and what you got cooking, making sure that you have proper uh, current running on that rail because these rails matter if you don't have 3.3 on your MCU something's wrong you're being shorted to ground or whatnot and at that point if you don't see that LED light on you're not headed down a witch hunt or you know throwing away your board when you can probably troubleshoot this and find out why it's not working and just replace a component or two and get it going that is going to be the components on the top of the flight controller let's go over these plugs real quick and what makes these plugs cool is as I showed you in the box, we got connectors for each and every one of these. Look, each and every one. Let me show you. Look at that. Boom. And that is now plugged. Ugh! That is now plugged in. And I can plug this into whatever I want because I've got a ground of 5 volt R2 and T2. Whoa. That is, <laughs> that plug was in good. That is what these plugs are for, and they've given you connectors to all of them. And generally, that one that we just seen, uh, T2 and R2 for this setup is generally for the receiver. Just below it, you're gonna see R2, ground, 
R1, T1, ground, and then a positive rail. And what that is, is that is your HDVTX, like DJI, the walk snail, whatever you're gonna run. You're gonna put that HD0, that's gonna go right there. Just under that, you've got a ground, you've got a power, a VTX, and you've got T1, that is your uh, uh, transmit one. And this plug here is gonna be used for an analog VTX. And let's see if that'll match my theory that this is for an analog VTX. It is, look at that, that would work. So this, this plug may be for analog. I'm not, I'm still not sure what it is. This is a new release that has not yet even hit the market. So what that means is I can't even look this up and see what this stuff is. So we're kind of shooting, <laughs> we're, sh we're shooting off the hip here, guys. All right, there's your uh, arrow letting you know that uh, front facing flight controller, that is where you want to point this when you mount it on your stack. Now, you can go into beta flight and just rotate that with your gyro alignment. So don't get hung up on that, okay? You can follow uh, my beta flight setup video and I walk you through all that kind of stuff. I'll put a link for that down in the video description. So right here, you're gonna see you've got your cam ground in five. That's where your camera would go. Just above that, this is where your ESC is gonna go and this is really cool. You've got a lot going on here. So, and then just above that, you've got another ground, five volt and buzzer minus. So obviously if you have a buzzer, that is where you'll connect that. All right, let's flip it over. What do we got on the back? Holy cow. So what you're seeing on the back is LED, five volt, ground. You've got a jumper here between 12 volts and battery. So that is a 12 volt back that is on board. That That is where it is stationed. You can see that little component right there. That is that is bridging these two. Don't let that stress you out. If you want battery voltage for this plug, which is also gonna be controlled by anything with this circle. See that? Boom. Where's another? Boom. This is what this is telling you. When you decide, which right now it comes from the factory at 12 volts, because you can see these two are bridged, that turns this pad to 12 volts. That is running that back, that 12 volt back, feeding all of that stuff. All you have to do is take a pair of tweezers or take your soldering iron or whatever, break this off, bloop, and then go ahead and throw a bead of solder from this arrow to this centerpiece, and you are now gonna pass full battery voltage. All right, so right here, keeping it moving, we've got a beautiful OSD chip. Yes, onboard OSD. There, you've got your onboard 512s of flash. Uh, over here, you're gonna find your uh, two different backs. So here's back one, and here is back two. Very, very nice. We've got some nice capacitance, cleaning up everything. All right, so look at that. That's really nice. Some nice components here. And there is an LC filter on board. That's really nice. That's when you take capacitor and inductance and you create a low pass filter. And you can use that to cut out frequencies you don't want. That way you're not introducing noise that you don't need. So this is pretty cool. So your flight controller has every pad broken out on the bottom. And on the top, you've got uh, everything in plugs. So they just, they just made your life simple no matter which route you want to take. And that is super nice. All right, so really quick, let's jump into the ESC. We're just going to take a quick scan. We're not going to get into too much, but as you can see, we've got plenty of filtration. Look at that. Filtered out to wazoo. Capacitors everywhere. And then you've got all your FETs running up and down. You've got everything you could ask for. you got big, beautiful pads, and they put these holes in here, and you may say, what is that? Well, that is to get a better grip and a better grab. And when that solder melts and it pours down each and every one of these little holes, you are not just surface soldered. You are not cold soldered. You don't have any cold joints. You are through and through soldered. That is awesome. The more you heat it up, it will actually pass through to the bottom and it will start to pour out. So don't put too much. And then right here, you've got a positive and a minus. That is beautiful. That is where you take your cut. That is where you take your capacitor and you can push it through there, solder it up and cut the legs off. And now you're not doing all this funky business trying to get it on. So they thought of us when they did that. Each and every pad for each and every motor wire run has the little holes that we just went over. Very nice. Motor one, motor three, and then we should have four up here. Yep, there you go. Look at that. And then here's your jumper. That's where you're gonna take this jumper plug that we just saw. Boom, that's this guy right here. That's gonna plug into this and plug into your flight controller and you're done. You don't even gotta think about it. It's all done and ready for you. Oh, and if you break it off, what happens if I break it off? Uh, yeah. 
it is all laid out right here. Just simply cut the jumper and hand solder each one. Ground battery, one through four, current. That's is not connected. So I don't know, maybe you're not getting ESC telemetry. You're probably not. On the flight controller though, it does support it because I saw an R8 on there. And then there you go. You've got your FETs coming across the bottom. You've got your BB2 chips and you got your MCUs right here. So everything is absolutely gorgeous. It's laid out nicely. You honestly can't beat this. This is fantastic. This is a great stack for a great price, 75 bucks. What more could you ask for? If I think about it, like what's missing? Nothing, there's nothing missing. It's all here on a great stack, built well, designed well for a great price. I don't see why you wouldn't do it. So, all right, pods, let me know who is interested in taking this brand new Taker F7 45 Bluetooth 8 bit 60 amp flight controller stack and putting it on the Mark V. I got it here. I got that that just came in from Jeb. Well, should we do it? Should we put it together? I don't know. Jump down in comments. Let me know. I hope that you guys will go get your own taker stack. I'll put some links to some of the predecessors, but you won't be able to buy this one until it actually releases. So I'll put a spot for it. And when it drops, I'll go ahead and put that link there so you can purchase it. But other than that, I hope that you guys had as much fun as I did. And I will see you on the next one.